Hello everybody. Um, the piece I'm going to be doing tonight is a story of the god of Irish poetry, Ogma, and his last day during a battle that took place between the Tuatha Dé Danann and the Fomorians. Now, Ogma had been a man but since he died, he was elevated to the status of a god. And it was the god of Irish poetry because it was said his words could inspire 10,000 men to battle because that's what he had done. He had gotten the two of Danann to finally rebel against their own slavers, the Fomorians. But they were apprehensive about going to war with him. They didn't think they could win. So they asked him to make him a promise of something that he would do, that he would guarantee they would get something from it and not all be wiped out. So he said, I promise I will kill their king, Indesh. Indesh was someone they wanted dead very badly, so they went along with it. And he did kill Indesh but he was mortally wounded in the process of killing him. And he died on the battlefield. So, this is the story of basically his last day as a man and his transcendence and a deal he makes somewhere else after this world. So it goes like this. I awake where the sheep graze, laid at a tree's base, to the sound of a soft breeze, making the leaves sway, laid on my back, gaze as the clouds change and then reshape, painting a scene hazy with deep shades of a dream state. And above in those silhouettes, I see a struggle to feel free, hundreds of children dead and mothers with real grief. Puddles that shimmer red, a murderous scheme seeing to none of us getting fed as plundering fiends siege men of the sea. No lovers of free will, crushing what we built. The blood of the free spills as colorful leaves wilt. These troubling scenes swill till it suddenly seems real and I find myself stood in the mud of a green field where I used to carry bales of my day-to-day -day forest choppings to swap for coppers as pay and went, ate my porridge off it. Now I'm carrying a blade with the weight of a promise on it. I'm not a novice. My dangerous name is just common knowledge, Ogma. Save me a place on your chopping block because I'm not going to stop. I'm prepared. I don't care what the prophet saw. I'm a proper warrior. Scoff as I traipse over top of bodies. I'll not be sorry. I came here today just to drop for Maurice. And so, as his soul let its wings span, this man took the sword from their king's hand to think that. Then his sword gave a whisper that rose upon the wind, tones of Irish old that told me to lean in, said her name was Orna, spoke to me of when, back when she was youthful, loving bones beneath the skin, back when she knew beauty, love, loneliness and kin. She swore an oath of Irish magic in devotion to her kin, so she told me not to worry, you just hold me and we'll win, cause Ogma, I am yours now, know that when you swing. Here before the four more, more than just a thing, a mold of iron ore, but more, she bore a soul within, she'd seen it all before, been snoring, bored of every kill, but she reawoke the day she saw a poet, Flora King. So I said, I need your help. I need to know if we can win, because I too swore an oath of pure devotion to my kin, so that when this day was over, all our foes lay bleeding, and the two a day will never bow or fall the knee again. She said, listen closely, he of jiggery pokery is close to waking now, so I give you mystic poetry. 
The two of they will die within the shadow of the Goat King if you allow the gaze of old Balor's eye and opening that old Fomori King whose evil gaze will sweep the land increasing your deceased till he's erased the seed of man. His reach is far and wide. His seat, a throne of demon clan built upon the bones of those we know as ye of Dan. Then an ancient incantation rose within the sword and showed my mind a place to find the stone to win the war. And when I looked within my palm, that stone was in it, so I gave the stone to Log and told him, aim to kill Balor. And then he fired. The Fomori king is dead. The two were dead and gave a roar. And as I lay upon the floor, bleeding, fading, I was torn between the world of man and shades of tyranny and og, debating should I stay or should I change into a ghost, take my place in ancient Ireland's history, labelled as a poet, labelled as a warrior that paved the way for more. I thought, no, it's okay, today's the day to go. Let them sing their songs about how they saw a hero fall, because in time it won't matter, it'll be like none of us were ever here at all. So there I was, dead. And you know they say, death is a ladder that either brings you up or down. I say, that's just something that they say because they know what scares you. Because I let you in on a little secret. Death leads to a hilltop in Nakfirna. Now I know what you're thinking. Not fear now. Strange place for the departed, right? Yeah. Not quite what I had in mind. Being stood on a hilltop overlooking the Shannon side, patting myself down thinking, maybe I hadn't died. But dead I was. And then I heard that fella's voice. Ogma! Welcome to the afterlife that was down, the god of the dead. The only thing matching his craving to trap mankind in his cave on the Shannon side was the mad fool's insatiable taste for some Spanish wine. Are you coming in for a drink? He said as he cracked a smile, flashing a set of nashers that looked like the rotten type. He looked like the sort of guy that had robbed the eye out of your head for the price of another pint, giving off those major alcoholic vibes. So I said, nah, you go on there yourself. I'm going to hang back for another while. I'm kind of still coming to terms with the fact that I'm not alive. He said, what do you mean you're not in vibe? So you're stuck here for the longest time. Don't be giving me that at all. Come in and drink with me, Agma boy. I thought, you know what? Fuck it. He's right. I said, go on, so sure, I may as well have a point if only to pass the time. He said, oh, we've no points here. We only serve Spanish wine. I thought this is going to be a long few millennia. But I went into the cave anyway. No sooner in the cave than it began to change in dramatic style. The floor beneath my feet became paved in some marble tiles. White halls lit up with the flame of a candlelight with paintings on either side and frames that were hanging high. I said, what's going on in here? He said, oh, I live in a palace, boy. All that cave stuff is just a disguise to hide from on magic eyes. Now follow me on. I'm thirsty and I want you to meet the boys. So I followed him into this massive, lavish room. Same crack as the hall, all paintings and candles too. Big long table in the middle, stretching as far as the eye could view, with people sitting on either side, and everyone had a stool. He walks in, Cunis, Cunis, I have a bit of news. This fella here just died from his battle wounds. His name's Ogma, and he'll be joining this afternoon. Then he walked me to the bar, bought me a glass of booze, brought me round talking to all of the lads he knew. Had me shaking hands and crack, you know the way fellas do after they've had a few. Then he pulls me to the side, said, Ogma, I have a new fella for you to meet and it's some, something you have to do. I said, who, uh, another member of the walking cadaver crew? He said, no, that's the thing, he's not dead, he's just passing through. I just spoke to him there and he 
He said he's a fan of you. I said, what's an undead man doing in the pub of the dead? He said, I hadn't a clue. You just go talk to him there and I'll be back in two. So I made my way over to this man who was silently watching me. And I said, an undead man in the dead man's pub. Ooh, it's like being inside of a prophecy. He said, yeah, kind of, but it isn't really that serious. Think of it more like being in a near-dead experience. See, I'm not really living, but I'm not technically dead either, at least not like these other fools. See, I'm connected to both sides. I'm still inside my mother's womb, but it's a few thousand years from now. I know, bear with me, try not to get too confused, but when you cross over dimensions, time works off other rules. I still have a bit of time here, so there's something I want to do, I something I want to offer you, and I'd advise you to think it through. I said, who are you? He said, I'm a poet from the future, and I plan on writing good stuff. Probably won't be making much money, but if I do, it'll be dumb luck. But if you lend me a helping hand, help me write some good stuff, we could tour around the country rhyming with our hoods up. I said, what? He said, look, this is it, this is the deal. In exchange for your right to take your place in my mind, you trade me your ancient enlightened way of phrasing to write the page. You trade me the kind of range that you gained from that higher plane and I'll become your conduit and you can live in Ireland again. I said, what? He said, look, this is it. This is your chance to live as a man, but I need your gift of the gab. It's a take it or leave it deal. Now, I can't make it any more simple than that. I thought, I don't know this fella, but it might be nice to see Ireland again. So then I said, do you get it yet? See, you're not looking at a human. And what happens when you broker nice deals with ancient deities? It's almost like my soul was spliced and now there's two of me. I hear it whilst alone at night, a poltergeist trapped within a wrapper where we both reside. So when I close my eyes, I can see the God that I was chosen by. Each poet hears the call, but only few are in the mold of I. Few are built to hold the rhyme. Fewer still control the rhyme and use that skill of all to build a road that's interwove with time. The road less traveled, the road that's interwove with mine. The poet's road, the only road that truly lets your soul survive. I mean, come on. I had to die and be reborn just to make it to this show tonight. You heard a Limerick accent here, but really, this was Ogma's voice.